Hello again, this is UML Operator. Okay, in this session, we're gonna be talking about UML associations, also known as connectors and relationships. Note that this applies to all UML platforms. I'm just using Sparks Enterprise Architect, but this applies to other tooling that I'm gonna be sharing in this channel that follows the OMG UML, Unified Modeling Language Standards. All right, we're gonna be talking about lines, whether they have arrowheads in them or not. We're gonna be talking about aggregation, a composition. We're gonna be talking about associative relationships. We're gonna be talking about generalization, realization, and dependencies. And dependencies can be a confusing subject for folks, so we're also going to include stereotypes relevant to dependencies. Now this playlist may get a little long. I'm gonna to try to keep each video to 10, 15 minutes at the most. We'll put this in a playlist. There'll be chapters down below. So you're able to move along at a pace that's, you know, you like, that makes sense to you. Before we get into the connectors, I wanna talk about class versus objects and objects versus object instances. So here we have a class here we have an object, and here we have an object instance. So a class is represents a blueprint, right, for creating objects. It defines the attributes and operations, as well as the behavior that objects of that class will possess. In general, a class describes the structure and behavior of a group of objects. When we go to an object, we can see that an object represents a specific instance of a class. It is the runtime entity created based on that blueprint by that class. So objects have state, behavior, identity. They can store values and attributes defined in the class, and they can execute operations defined by that class. So when we go to an object instance, this is a concrete occurrence of that object in memory or in session, depending on what your architecture is. It refers to a specific occurrence or instantiation of that class. So when an object is created based on the class definition, it becomes an object instance. I needed to say all of that because as we're getting into the connectors, the relationships, etc., we're gonna be talking about instance level relationships and class level relationships. So class level relationships represent the association dependencies between classes, while instance level relationships represent the associations and dependencies between individual objects or instances of classes. So as we're going through this and you're looking at connectors, there are connectors, associations, relationships that are set up for composition, association, and aggregation. When we're looking at class level relationships, we're getting into generalization, realization, dependencies, and then associative connectors or relationships between uh, classes. So I needed the preface to get that out. Now let's jump into each one of these connectors. Now I've, I've done for most of these Sparks training sessions, so it's applicable to Sparks Enterprise Architect, you are going to go to help. You all should know by now how to get to the help page, which launches when you click online help in the start help menu or ribbon, and you're going to land on this page. So from here for this conversation, what we want to go to is modeling languages. Then we want to go to unified modeling language, and then we want to go to connectors. And here you can expand and Sparks provides you a great deal of intelligence related to UML connectors. Other tools provide documentation and you could go to OMG website and you could look up the UML specs for relationships connectors. But we're gonna use this. I would reflect on what Sparks provides documentation. It's the best path forward. All right, now let's get into these connectors. The first one is association, which is essentially a line with two endpoints, all right, that are connecting either itself or to another 
element, right? So there's four different types of association. There's bidirectional, there's unidirectional, there's aggregation, which we'll talk about here, which includes composition and reflexive, right? So we're gonna keep it simple in this session and just talking about the line with two endpoints. So any diagram tool, you can bring in a box, you can draw a line between the, the box and have an association between them. That's boxes and lines. What differentiates the tooling is the amount of data or metadata that you're allowed to put under these boxes and how quickly you can do that. So association is simply, I'll go ahead and double it, click it and bring in the property box, is simply a line that can be unspecified, bidirectional, source to destination. You know, you can draw these lines any way that you want. So essentially an association is represented by a solid line that you see here from one entity to another entity, and it uses that entity as part of its behavior. Before we get into composition, I wanna talk about aggregation. So aggregation is a special case of association. There can be directional associations between the elements. So when you're using, let's say an object, it has another object, a class, has another class. So I use the has a in there to differentiate the association between the two elements, classes or objects. So the direction between them specified which object contains the other object. So that's why I use the in aggregation, the has a relationship that you see here. And we'll talk more about that when we get into an example of aggregation versus composition. So I have two examples here of composition versus aggregation. So let's go to the first one. In this case, we have a smartphone, right? I don't care who the product owner is. And a smartphone has a power source. So you can see power source, it has a power source. So the smartphone is sharing the power source, right? In composition, which we'll talk about in a moment more, it's composed of, it owns a. So if the power source goes away, smartphone doesn't go away. However, when we get into the composition conversation, if the smartphone goes away, all of the things it's composed of go away. So that's the difference between aggregation, the open diamond versus composition, the closed diamond. But before we get more into composition, I wanna show you another example. In this particular case, we have a university. And the university is made up of departments. So it owns departments and it has professors. So this is just another form of showing you aggregation versus composition. So if the department goes away, the professor doesn't go away or professors, because in this case, you have zero to many relationship. We'll get into multiplicity and cardinality, all of that later. But you have zero to many departments that have zero to, and then we set a threshold of five professors, all right? University, there's one relationship in composite. When we get into cardinality, multiplicity, up to 20 departments. See that? So if the University goes away, if I turn locks off and show demo this, if university goes away, the departments go away and the professors don't necessarily go away, but the departments go away, all right? Another great way to look at this is using relevance or traceability. So in Sparks, we have a tool for traceability and we're gonna use that. So over in the lower right, I have traceability. So when I select university, University is composed of, owns a department or departments. When I look at department, you can see that department is part of university and it's composed of zero to five professors. So this makes it a lot easier to understand the difference between composition versus aggregation. So that concludes the first part of this video series. In our next session, we're gonna talk about class level relationships. 
So we're going to be getting into associations or associative uh, connectors. We're going to get into generalization. We're going to get into realization. And then the fun part is dependencies. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thanks very much for watching and I'll talk to you later.